Hey, darling. I hope you're doing good. I heard everything, so I thought I'd hit you up. <laughs> oh, hey, Mom. I'm sorry to interrupt whatever it is that's putting you in a good mood, but I have no idea what you mean. <laughs> what did you hear about me? Come on, you don't have to pretend like you don't know. <laughs> no, I actually don't. You're kind of creeping me out a little here. Well, there's no point trying to hide anything from me. I am your mother after all, and moms just know everything. You've been coming home awfully late recently, haven't you, darling? So, who is it? Who is who? I'm asking about your girlfriend. Oh, I see. It finally clicked. Okay, I do have a girlfriend, but that actually has nothing to do with me coming home late these days. I just don't feel comfortable at home recently, so I've been killing time outside. It's not that I don't want to be at home, it just feels awkward with Sarah always being there. I swear she basically lives with us now, after Dean and her got married. I don't dislike her at all, but she's always there, and I feel like I have no privacy at home. Oh, so I was right, you do have a girlfriend. You better invite her over, Stude, I would love to meet her. Feels like you just ignored half of what I said. But yeah, I already expected that if I told you I have a girlfriend, you would definitely tell me to introduce her to you. Which is exactly why I've been quiet about this. It's way too bothersome to invite her over and introduce her to everyone, with everything going on in our house. So for now, I've mostly been staying over at her place, where it's more peaceful. It's not like I don't come back home at all though. You know that I'm home every now and then. I see. If you're staying over that often, you're pretty much living together right now, then. Well, if you put it that way, then yes. So, you must both be pretty comfortable with each other, then. If you're that close, then you're also considering engagement and such, right? It has crossed my mind, but nothing is decided yet. On my end, at least, not sure about her. I see. Well, it doesn't sound like you're having any problems, which is good. Surely there's no issue if you invite her over to say hello, then. Have you met her family? Yeah, we've had a few dinners together. Oh, my. So you're telling me that you've been spending time with her family and haven't once thought of inviting her over to ours. I wouldn't want her family to think that we're not welcoming over here. You should bring her over as soon as possible. I told you already, that is exactly what I don't want to do, especially not now. Dean, Dad, and you especially, Mom. It makes me uncomfortable with how overly cheery you all are over Dean and Sarah's marriage. Like, sure, I get it. They just got married, which is a nice thing. But you're all going over the top, giving Sarah way too much attention. Not that she seems to mind it, but that's not the issue. There's no such thing as being too happy. <laughs> After all, Sarah is the daughter of a millionaire. We've got the heiress of Sun Gourmet in the family now, one of the largest global restaurant franchises. Sarah's an only child, too. Do you know what that means? Dean might inherit the entire franchise. <laughs> I've never been so proud of him. He basically won at life. Which means that we did, too. You're getting too far ahead of yourselves over something that isn't even confirmed. In fact, it's probably only a slim chance that Sarah's dad chooses Dean to take over when he retires. Sure, Dean is his son-in-law, but his degree is completely irrelevant to the food industry. You're sweating the details too much. <laughs> we even made Dean quit his old job and transfer over to Sun Gourmet. Who cares about what his degree is in? If he can show his worth directly from his performance, he'll move up through the ranks in no time. I'm not so sure about that one. I'm just curious about how they met in the first place. Isn't Sarah a fashion designer? Then it was surely fate that led them together. <laughs> I really don't like the sound of that word. Also, I don't mean to tell you to not be happy, but please don't go overboard. I really don't think it's a good thing for you to be so obsessed with Sarah's family. She seems fine with it for now, but I bet you a lot of people would be highly uncomfortable with the way that you guys are treating her right now. What's wrong with being kind? Sarah deserves only the best. We can't put too much pressure on her. 
When she tries to help do work around her house, I'm always there to assist her. I think you're missing my point here about her special treatment. I guess there are no problems right now. I just hope it doesn't get any worse. You really don't come home very much these days. I thought we finally spent some time together the other day, but you just collected some of your things and left again. I don't want to get in the way of the newlyweds. I did at least say hi when I dropped by. Have you not talked to your dad recently? He's been really excited to show off his new suit, but you never show up. It's his new favorite suit because Sarah and Dean gave it to him. He pretty much wears it every other day. <laughs> Well, that seems like a great gift. Uh, I can see why he would be happy with that. Men's clothing might not be Sarah's area of expertise, but she's still a fashion designer after all. I'm sure she has great taste. Good to know that Dad and Dean are doing good. And what about you? Huh? What about me? Don't you think you could learn a thing or two from Dean? A gift or two couldn't hurt, you know? The least you could do would be to introduce that girl of yours to us. Something to brighten her days. Mm, don't think that there's much for me. I guess you could start waiting for your first grandchildren. Don't really know what else would make you guys happier than you already are. That really does put me in a pickle. I absolutely love to have grandchildren, but being called grandma, I'm not that old, am I? Uh, right. I, I don't think so. Don't ask me. Mom, hello? What the heck did you just say to my girlfriend? She just came home in tears. Oh, I just happened to see the two of you walking together happily. And then I saw you leave, so I thought I'd go chat with her a little. I assume the two of you were on lunch break, yes? Yes, we were just grabbing lunch. But what the heck do you mean, a little chat? She told me that you dragged her to a coffee shop and basically interrogated her. That means it seems like I did something mean. <laughs> you wouldn't introduce her to me, so I just thought I'd go over and say hi myself. And what did you even tell her? She's been crying ever since she came home, but keeps telling me it's not because of you when it clearly is. Not much, really. It was just a normal conversation. At first, we just introduced ourselves. You never once told me her name, so it's nice that I can start calling her Helen. What a nice name. After that, I just asked her what her family did for a living. She said her father passed away from an illness when she was still young, and that her mother is also currently sick and not working. Accounting, was it? I think that's what she said. And what else did you tell her? She won't stop crying. You must have said something completely out of place. No, I really didn't say much. Oh, I guess I did say something about her family. Just that her family must be well below the poverty line if she was raised by a single mom. What the hell, mom? Are you crazy? Hey, watch your mouth. I just realized she was probably lacking some key components of socialization without a father to teach her. And therefore, isn't worthy of dating my son. It's not like I told her to break up with you. I just made sure she realized that someone like her doesn't have the right to be with you. That is beyond messed up. Do you not understand how cruel and disgusting that is? It's bad enough to even have those thoughts in the first place, but to say it to her face is completely unacceptable. Do you not have any compassion? Why would I need to feel sorry for someone who would only be detrimental to our family? What? That's not how you should think of others. Just think about it. Let's say you get married to her. It's going to be all of our money flowing over to her and her sick mother. They're the perfect representation of a family living in poverty. Why should her family suffer with them? The best way to avoid a disease is to stay away from the rats spreading it. What you're saying right now is so disgusting. On top of that, you're literally just basing all of this off your assumptions. You know nothing about her or her mother. It's ridiculous that you can come to these conclusions and would even think about blurting them out like that. I'd rather not learn any more about a family of rats, thank you very much. It just wouldn't be fair to Dean. He used all the luck in his life to pull Sarah. Our family literally won the lottery. 
Why would we want more people to split the money with anyway? Especially a rat and her sick mother. You're really calling your own son's girlfriend a rat? You might be my mom, but I've lost all respect for you. Well, we can always kick you out of her family if you try to go through with marrying that rat. You don't have to kick me out. I was planning on cutting ties with all of you anyway. What? That's pretty stupid of you. You're basically just throwing your money away. If you were with us, you get to be close to Dean and Sarah. But you're going to live with poverty instead. You're going to be supporting an old sick woman. An absolutely moronic decision. And once again, you're saying all of this purely based on assumptions and stereotypes. Helen is not the one lacking key components of socialization. You are. Your lack of compassion and basic ethics is disgusting me. And you're disappointing me as a son. And as such, I would rather not have you claiming that you belong to our family. So please do go and cut ties with us. You could beg on your knees and we won't spare you a single dollar. It sure is a good thing that Dean studied law. We can make sure that you're completely unrelated to us in every legal form. Go ahead. That helps me, to be honest. I know that I'm not wanted by any of you anyway. Dean is clearly being treated as a favorite child, and now you have a daughter-in-law too that you can love. Sorry, I guess it's not Dean and Sarah that you love, is it? It's just the status and money that they bring. You've been overly clingy and affectionate since their engagement. I'm sure Dean was also disgusted by your clear change in attitude towards him. And what is wrong with that? There's nothing wrong about a mother showing her love for her son. Yeah, but that's not what you're doing. You're trying to attach yourself to Sarah's family like some kind of parasite. I'm talking for myself here, but I'm sure Dean thinks the same. It's so darn obvious that your so-called love and affection is aimed towards money and not us, your children. Your fakeness is beyond uncomfortable. Stop making it seem like you and Dean are the same. Maybe you didn't feel loved because you were always useless and never were good at anything. But Dean is different. He always did well in school and understood how to be grateful toward his parents. You are a failure of a son that can't even begin to compare to Dean. It's only fitting for you to be dating a rat. You don't deserve to be part of our family. Okay, I understand. I'll never come home again. Hey, it's been a while, hasn't it? How are things over there? Oh my! Hi there, darling! I certainly wasn't expecting to hear from you again. Not sure if you should be calling me darling. <laughs> I completely cut ties with all of you, remember? You said I didn't deserve to be in your family. Oh, you were always hot-blooded. But I would never say that you don't belong in my family. You're my son, after all. Yeah, sure. I'll just ignore the fact that I can scroll up and read those old messages. Fine. Maybe I said some things that I'm not proud of in the heat of the moment. What I said two years ago about legally cutting ties was just that, the unfortunate rash words of a heated conversation. I talked to Dean about it later, and he suggested that we investigate and better understand the situation. Investigate? Did you call some detectives or something? <laughs> so, what did you find out? We found out that Helen's mother works for the government. Rather high up at that. And Helen herself, she only mentioned that she worked in accounting. But what did we find? That she's the chief accountant at a large accounting firm. Oh, yeah, that's the accounting firm that her father started. And after he passed away, some of her relatives took over. But Helen studied accounting in a college and started working there after she graduated. Her relatives passed control of the company over to her since it was her dad's company originally even though she had just graduated college. So I heard, and I realized I mistakenly said some rather unpleasant things about some amazing people. So, do you think you could give me an opportunity to apologize to Helen about all the horrible stuff I said about her and her family? I would love to meet her again and talk it out so that we can be on good terms. So, the moment you find out about her status, you think of apologizing? You're about two years too late realizing that you should apologize, you know? Oh, my mother-in-law isn't sick anymore. She was still recovering at the time when you first met Helen, but she's been healthy for a while now. Healthy enough that she's been working just as hard as she was before she got sick. Did you call her mother-in-law? Are you telling me that you actually got married? 
Yeah, I did. I took their last name as well. I know it's pretty rare for the husband to take the wife's name, but neither of us wanted to hold on to any association with you guys. So, have you figured out why I decided to contact you again? I'm happy that you decided to contact us again, but no, I have no idea why. Just last week, we had a child. A very healthy baby boy. Seven and a half pounds. What? You're telling me that I'm a grandma? Oh, were you not one already? What about Dean and Sarah? I've been encouraging them to hurry up and do it, but they seem to have trouble having kids. I keep telling them to go get some fertility tests done, but they always just say that they'll do it sometime soon. Yikes, I think you're stepping way too far into their private matters. Why don't you give them a little privacy and support with them whatever they decide to do? It's not my fault though, is it? Seeing as they're young and all, I thought it'd be no time until they had a child. But they were taking way too long. How could I not encourage them to work harder for a kid? It's a pretty sensitive topic. It should be between the two of them. It doesn't matter if it's just encouragement. All you're doing is giving them stress and pressure. Sure, whatever. I'm fine with that if you bring your baby over. Bring him over as soon as you can, and make sure Helen comes with so that I can apologize to her. I'd rather not. He's still a newborn baby. I don't want him to be overwhelmed. And it's still too early to take him outside anyways. In that case, I'll come and visit him. I would rather you didn't. Besides, you wouldn't want to visit the house of some poor family well below the poverty line, would you? I'm telling you that I'm sorry for saying that. Please just forget about it and forgive me. I didn't actually mean it. It's not something that you can easily just forget about. That was Helen's first time meeting you. I'm pretty sure you traumatized her with that kind of first impression. And about the baby, it's only been a week since he was born. Give us some more time to think about it. Mom? Hello? I just heard from Dean. Is it true about Dad? Did he actually have a stroke? I heard that half of his body is still paralyzed. Oh, so Dean told you, I see. Yes, it's true. He suddenly collapsed one day last year, and since then he's been unable to move his entire left half of his body. I don't think he can feel anything either, and he's been bedridden ever since. After he was released from the hospital after the initial treatment, we had him transferred to a nursing home. We can't really take care of him at home after all. Why can't you take care of him at home? Are you sure it's not just because you don't want to take care of him? Dean's told me about everything. He said you hardly ever go to visit Dad, and that it's always Sarah who goes to visit him and bring him things. You're making Sarah do everything, even though she's busy enough with her own job and marriage? I don't see the problem with that. Sarah is part of our family now. It's her responsibility to do chores around the house and help take care of the family. Even if that was the case, it shouldn't be solely her responsibility. Everyone should be doing their part. But from what Dean tells me, it seems like you've just been shoving everything onto her these days. It must be incredibly frustrating for Sarah to be doing all of that and have you complaining that they're taking too long to have a child on top of that. And this is just my opinion, but taking care of dad should be mostly your responsibility. He's your husband. Sure, but it's not like I can help it. I'm just utterly heartbroken and fatigued, having my husband collapsing and seeing my children struggle. I can't even see my grandchild to help cheer me up. I've suffered too much. I don't have the emotional room to spare to be taking care of other people. You are the last person who can complain. Dean, Sarah, and Dad have all been suffering more than you for sure. And that's all because they have to live with you. It's completely understandable that Sarah and Dean haven't been able to have a child. Just imagine having an overly clingy mother-in-law that doesn't understand personal boundaries. And then having all the housework and all the chores shoved on you. So you're trying to blame me for them not being able to have a child. That's ridiculous. Well, no, it might not be the only reason. But for sure it's a possibility and a pretty big one at that. Are you home right now? Yeah, I am. Sarah went to visit your father, so I'm at home alone right now. Okay, then I have something that I want to talk to you about. What is it? I'm not lending you any money. Mom, you need to leave the house. Get out. 
Why should I? And what makes you think you can say that to me? Dean and Sarah are at their limit. They're simply far too exhausted, both emotionally and physically. Which isn't surprising at all, when you provide absolutely nothing to the family aside from your constant complaints and disgusting attitude. I've heard that you've done absolutely nothing to help dad, and it's gotten so bad that Dean is having to use his rare days off to visit the nursing home. And? None of that justifies why I should leave this house. This is my house. No one can tell me to get out. No, it's dad's. He was the one who bought it, and the deed is in his name. Then that just means it's my house, too. It's part of our joint marital assets. What's wrong with you? Not for long. Dad wants a divorce. What? Why? He's too disappointed in you. He trusted you so much before, so your change in the past few years is just too much for him. What? Did he say that to you directly? Have you even seen him since you left? I'm with him right now. I came to visit him and check on his condition. I brought Helen and the baby with me in the hopes that it would cheer him up. And yeah, Dad was happy to be able to see his grandson. Dean and Sarah also came with us, and we're about to go home now. Why would you take him to your father before me? He probably can't even hold the baby with his paralyzed arms. Ah, and Dad told me something interesting, if not surprising. He said you started calling him useless after he got paralyzed. It must have been really tough for him, being betrayed by his wife that he had trusted. Dean is financially supporting you now, right? And you've shown no signs of gratitude whatsoever and instead complain to him that it's not enough? Well, yes. He became paralyzed and quit his job before retirement age, so of course Dean has to support me now. Is it really true that your father wants a divorce? Yeah, it's true. If you don't believe me, I can FaceTime you right now and have him tell you with his own words. Right now would be a pretty good time to do so too, because we're all here with him at the nursing home. Not only is everyone here, they're all next to me reading these messages on my iPad. Literally everyone's there. Seeing all of this? Yeah, everyone. The baby's fast asleep though, but yes, everyone else is reading your messages. Oh, and by the way, Dad changed the beneficiary of his life insurance from you to Dean. What? No way. You all forced him to. Nope, he chose to himself. He can move his dominant hand a little, so he called the insurance company by himself and got it changed. And he seems to be concrete about his decision to divorce you. He wants it as soon as possible. Oh, I guess you don't have to worry about taking care of him now. Not that you ever would anyway, but we'll take care of that. Then what about the alimony? That's the first thing you think about? All of us are disappointed in you, especially Dad. You will get your share of the marital property and whatever the court decides in alimony, of course. But after that's done, he wants you out of the house. And what about Dean? And you? Are you both going to let me get kicked out like this? I'm your mother! Yes, both Dean and I are also done with your nonsense too. If anything, we reached our limit long ago. Dad was the last one who still trusted you. Then let me live at your place. Your mother-in-law works for the government, and Helen also earns a lot from the accounting firm, right? It must be a very big house. Surely there's room for me to live with you. Oh, the house is definitely big. Helen's late father had his own company, after all. Wait, Helen's father has his own company, too. I told you that before. I'm surprised you forgot, considering your obsession with people's wealth. But yeah, about you living with us... That's a pretty hard no from me. What? Why? Are you going to abandon your own mother? Yes, just like you abandoned your own husband, and like you abandoned me before, it's the same thing. You reap what you sow. When we needed your help the most, you chose to betray us. Also, Dean just told me that you need to get ready in half an hour. Ready for what? Ready to move. That's way too soon, it's not possible. It's about half an hour to get home from the nursing home. He'll bring the divorce papers that dad has already signed, so he wants you to sign your part right there and then when he comes home. After that, he'll go submit them. So yeah, you have exactly half an hour to pack up all of your belongings before you get kicked out. He says that he never wants to see your face again. But why? I've always been nice to Dean. And to Sarah, too. I was such a caring mother-in-law. 
She says you were nice for the first few weeks, but it didn't take long for you to start shoving all the work onto her. And it wasn't long after that you started telling her that she was useless, just like you used to say to me and dad as well. When did I ever say that? I guess it was such a normal thing for you to say that you don't even remember saying it. It all makes sense now, thinking about it. You've always been the kind of person to say cruel things like that without hesitation. It's not surprising that you said such cruel things to Helen about her and her family. You're just someone who bases everything on your own assumptions and stereotypes, and you care about nothing more than a person's status and financial worth. That's not even true. Also, I don't have anywhere to go. If Dean doesn't want to see me anymore, you're the only person that can save me. I've already told you, that is not happening. Someone that discriminates based on money and family background has no place around me or anywhere in society. I don't want you anywhere near Helen or my kid. You're simply a bad influence. It's surprising Dean and I didn't grow up to become like you. It must all be thanks to Dad. I'm sorry about the things I said. Please just help me. I don't have a place to live. And who exactly are you apologizing to? Is it to Dad? Because you told him that he was useless after he became paralyzed. Or is it to Dean? Because you kept demanding he give you money for you to waste on luxuries you had no business buying? Or are you apologizing to Sarah for throwing all the chores and housework onto her? Or for making her take care of your own husband when she had enough on her hands already? Or for viewing her as nothing more but an opportunity to become rich? Maybe it's me you're apologizing to for constantly making me doubt my self-worth. Or is it Helen for discriminating against her for being raised by a single mother? There seems to be a lot of things you need to apologize for. I'm starting to get a little tired, but I can certainly keep going. How about pressuring Sarah and Dean about having a child? I'm sorry for everything. I seem to just say things that I don't mean sometimes. I can't help it. I'm really sorry. I really mean it. You say them so naturally because the things that you say are exactly what you think, right? Just give up already. We've all seen your true personality and experienced it firsthand. All of us. Go find a cheap hotel or something and reflect on all of your actions. The money from the divorce should last you some time if you're rational with the way that you use it. Please give me an hour at least. 30 minutes is way too short. In fact, make that two hours, please. I get it. No one wants me and I don't deserve to live with you all, so please just give me two hours and I'll pack everything and leave. Dean said that if he finds anything gone that's not yours, he'll be calling the police on you. He's about to leave now, so you better start packing. Maybe if you don't say anything to get on his nerves, he'll give you two hours to prepare to leave. So he really is being serious about this. Of course he is. We're all serious about this. Dad saying there's nothing for us to feel sorry about because it's just you getting your just desserts. I think he has a point. I value the importance of my current family more than any amount of gratitude I have for you raising me. What the heck? I raised you properly with all my love. You should be more grateful. I think you're mistaking me with Dean. I certainly didn't receive any love from you growing up. You always told me that I was worthless. Dean is next to me shaking his head. I don't think he felt loved either. I guess it was Dad who took care of both of us the most after all. So what? Is no one on my side? Is anyone going to help me? No one wants to help someone like you, who has never once tried to give something up for another person. Can you ask Dean if I can take the coffee machine with me? I used it the most, so it's basically mine, right? He said no, and you apparently have 25 minutes left to leave. Wait! Why? What did I do? And just like that, my mom had been abandoned by the entire family. Dad was saying that she should be fine with living in cheap hotels for a while because there were a lot of savings in their shared account. And because it was an agreed divorce with no complexities, those savings would be split evenly between them. What Dad didn't know was that during his time in the nursing home, Mom had been spending those savings recklessly on whatever she wanted. So once again, her actions came back to bite her. Dad was very sad, not because his ex-wife couldn't afford a place to stay, but because he wanted to be able to leave some money to Dean and I after he passed. 
We assured him that it was fine, as he had done so much for us already when we were still growing up. I heard that mom ended up staying at a hostel, but refused to even find a part-time job and eventually couldn't pay for it. Once again, she was kicked out. She asked both me and Dean to help her out financially, but we respectfully declined, considering we no longer considered her as our mother. Dad seems to be happier these days, with Dean and I visiting every now and then. Sometimes he sees me by myself and looks a little sad, but that's just because he loves it so much when I visit with Helen and the baby. As for Dean and Sarah, they successfully conceived a baby a few months after the source of the stress was kicked out of the house. It really seems to be true that stress and emotional state has a large influence on your body. We're all excited for them, but it's funny that Dad seems to be the happiest about it. I guess he doesn't have much to do in the state that he's in, which is certainly a sad thing. But on the bright side, he does seem to be able to move more of his body now, and his speech has completely returned. As for me, I'm living happily with Helen and our baby. My previous company didn't have much support for paternal leave, which was a problem because Helen couldn't take a lot of time off from work either, being the chief accountant and all. While we could have opted to hire a babysitter, we were both in agreement that it was better for us to spend as much time with him ourselves. Because of that, I left my company and transferred to Helen's accounting firm. I technically won't start for a few months, so I can focus on taking care of the baby. But after that, I'll start working from home. While I don't have any qualifications for accounting, I did get my degree in economics and have experience working similar office jobs. It's not directly related, but it's close enough for me to be useful. I promise this isn't special treatment just because I'm her husband. At least that's what I'm telling myself for now. <laughs> but I'll definitely be using my free time to study like mad and get some qualifications. I'd love to eventually become a CPA so that I can further contribute as both Helen's husband and employee. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit like if you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe to see more similar content. See you in the next video.